Welcome to Clark Planetarium and our Science on the Sphere. My name is Tracy, and with me today is Nathan. We live in a very exciting time when it comes to space exploration. NASA and other space agencies have used flybys, orbiters, and landers to explore other planets. A spacecraft named OSIRIS-REx is about to attempt to bring home the first sample from a moving asteroid. NASA announced a mission to put the first woman and next man on the moon by 2024. And eventually the goal is to put humans on another planet, Mars, for the first time ever. Man-made spacecraft are even exploring beyond the edge of the solar system and touching the atmosphere of our sun. Robotic spacecraft aren't the only way we explore though. People have also been sent into space over the last several decades. Many milestones have been made by many brave men and women. One recent accomplishment took place just last year with an all-woman spacewalk. This was a huge achievement for both women and the science program. Two women conducted the spacewalk 200 miles above the Earth's surface to replace charging units used with the solar cells on the International Space Station. The International Space Station, or the ISS, is very important in learning more about how to live and work in space, both longer and farther away from the Earth. The ISS is the largest satellite in low Earth orbit. Satellites are objects that orbit another object in space. The moon is a natural satellite. The International Space Station and other man-made satellites can be used to study the Earth by taking pictures or transmitting data from sensors on board. Here, we can see the International Space Station fly by on our sphere. Can you see when it passes us? The International Space Station is about the size of a six-bedroom house. It has sleeping quarters, science labs, bathrooms, a cafeteria, and windows to view the Earth. There's a link below for a tour. The ISS's average distance from the Earth is roughly 240 miles. That can seem like a really big distance on Earth. 240 miles is about the distance across Utah from east to west. But in space, 240 miles is nothing. The moon is 1,000 times farther away, and it's still considered to be close to us. With a maximum crew of six people, only a small number of people have been able to spend time aboard the ISS. In total, over 200 individuals from 19 countries have visited the ISS. The ISS serves as an example of international cooperation, including partnerships between government and private science institutions. So what kind of science experiments are done aboard the ISS? Uh, one thing scientists use the ISS to study is the effects of weightlessness on the human body. Traveling to the moon takes only days, but it will take roughly eight months to travel the distance to Mars. The longer the body is in a weightless environment, the more changes it makes to try and adapt. Let's talk about weightlessness aboard the ISS. One common misconception is that the ISS is outside the effects of Earth's gravity. These astronauts are experiencing weightlessness, but do you think they are experiencing the influence of gravity? At 200 plus miles away from Earth, the ISS experiences about 90% of the gravity that we feel here on the surface. The real reason that astronauts visiting and living on the ISS experience weightlessness is because the ISS is constantly falling toward Earth. The ISS is traveling at 17,500 miles per hour. That's about 10 times faster than a bullet shot from a rifle. That's pretty fast. As the ISS travels, Earth's curved surface is beneath it. Every second, the ISS falls down 14 feet. But in that same second, the ISS travels the distance it takes for the Earth's surface beneath it to curve down 14 feet. So the ISS is falling around the Earth without getting any closer to the surface. Since all objects fall at the same rate, astronauts on the ISS fall along with the station and appear to be weightless. There are many benefits of studying the process in Earth orbit. Not only are astronauts close to home in case they have an emergency, they are still protected from a lot of radiation by the Earth's magnetic field. This allows astronauts to gain information while still in a relatively safe environment. At its incredibly fast speed, the ISS orbits about, um, about 15 times around the Earth in 24 hours, one day for us. Meaning that if you were aboard the ISS, 
you would experience about 15 sunrises and sunsets every day. So while you probably haven't been to the ISS, do you think you've ever seen it before? Satellites can be seen from Earth and usually look like a star moving quickly across the sky. Not only can we see the ISS from Earth, but it is brighter than any other satellite. The link in the comments is a place you can go to find out when the ISS is visible from where you live. The International Space Station's main function is as a research lab where over 2,700 research investigations have already taken place. Many of these experiments are providing new advances in technology. Some of these include developing techniques to help plants grow better in space and special gel patches that could work as space bandages. The ISS is a pretty amazing place where discoveries are being made every day to help us prepare for the future of space exploration as well as learning about and improving life on our own planet. Here's a fun trivia question. You can use it on friends. Uh, from space, you can see evidence of three different animals. What are they? So the first is plankton. Even though they are microscopic, the evidence of them can be seen from the International Space Station. Coral, uh, which are animals and not plants, can be seen from space. And finally, humans. Thanks for joining us at the Clark Planetarium. Keep looking up. <laughs>